It began more than 60 days ago, the India-China border standoff, the longest and the bloodiest face-off with China since the 1962 war. Now there's the first sign of de-escalation. Soldiers on both sides have begun stepping back. You'll see reports in newspapers tomorrow. And the headlines might read something like this. Chinese troops withdraw from the Galwan post. Only this is not tomorrow's. This is from July 1962. 15th July 1962, same place, same players, similar situation. Almost 100 days after this headline was published, the Chinese attacked India. So it would be unwise to commit the same mistake again and trust them this time. Celebration right now will be premature. It's best to approach this with caution. The India-China border standoff is as old as the India-China border. And for 70 years now, India and China have failed to clearly define the line of actual control, which is basically the crux of the problem. So escalations and de-escalations will continue until the root cause is addressed. Let's talk about the recent events. The standoff began in early May when Chinese troops tried to intrude into Indian territory. It escalated three weeks ago when 20 Indian soldiers were killed in action in Galwan. India has retaliated in various ways, by scrutinizing Chinese businesses, blocking Chinese apps, also preparing for any military escalation, all the while holding talks at various levels to de-escalate. Tonight we can report what we're calling a limited resolution. There is disengagement at three flashpoints, Galwan, the Hot Springs and Gogra. Chinese troops were spotted moving away at these three locations. They've gone back by one to two kilometers. Sources tell Beyond that the PLA, the People's Liberation Army, the Chinese Army, was seen moving back its vehicles. Tents have been removed. This is at patrol point 14, the location of the violent clash between Indian and Chinese troops, the clash that happened on the 15th of June. So you could say this is the beginning of the end, but early days. Exactly a week ago, India announced a ban on Chinese apps, a decision that signaled a new low in the India-China relationship. On Friday, India's Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi, visited Ladakh. He sent a strong message to Beijing that India will defend itself against all threats. And all of this may have contributed to what we are seeing right now. But what specifically has changed in the last 48 hours? It was a two-hour long phone call on Sunday that is said to have led to the disengagement. Special representatives from both sides held talks. From India, it was National Security Advisor Ajit Doval. From China, it was Foreign Minister Wang Yi. The special representative mechanism is an old one. It was especially set up to tackle the border issue. It was created back in 2003 after former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee's visit to China. Now, both sides seem to have fallen back on the same mechanism to, set, to settle this standoff. And sources tell Vion that the talks were cordial. The conversation will continue. The foundation of today's de-escalation was reportedly built last week. This was during the core commander level talks five days ago. Reports say that during these talks, both sides agreed to a step-by-step de-escalation. But at the risk of repeating myself, I have to say the situation remains precarious. It's not over till it's over. And with China, it never really is over. I'm not trying to be a naysayer, just advising caution. And let me give you three more reasons why. Number one, look at the location of this standoff, the Galwan Valley. It's not your traditional flashpoint. Suddenly, the Chinese became aggressive here. Galwan has not witnessed any major clashes before in a while. And now Beijing says that the entire Galwan Valley belongs to China. In the year 1959, China's then premier, Zhu Enlai, had said this on record. He said that a 1956 map showed the entire Galwan Valley as part of India. But now more than 60 years later, China has dismissed both the map and the statement. Now China claims Galwan and objects to India's border infrastructure projects there. And this is what has triggered the standoff in May. The situation is far from resolved. The second reason I want to give is Sikkim. Nakula in Sikkim is still in focus. This area also saw a standoff in May. There were clashes reportedly. Disengagement is fine, but the issue will persist as long as China makes baseless claims on Indian territory and disregards historical commitments. And the third reason I want to cite is Nepal, China's new proxy. 
At China's behest, Nepal is claiming disputed territories, even constitutionally changing its map. About a month ago, Nepal escalated the dispute by adding six new border outposts. Recent reports say that two of them have been removed, but there's nothing to suggest that China won't be fomenting trouble. China's intentions are questionable. It is using its military to conduct its foreign policy and grab land. Today's disengagement is a good beginning. But there's also a question. Is this the new normal? Two steps forward, four steps back. Remember, this withdrawal, for want of a better word, is not status quo ante. They haven't withdrawn completely. So have both sides now accepted this as the new status quo? Is this where they'll remain? Also, how can India settle this more permanently? By forcing China to define the buffer zone, by clearly demarcating the buffer zone and getting armies out of there on both sides. This zone should be for policing, not for defending borders. Unless this basic agreement is achieved, even complete withdrawal will not spell the end of this.